Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and now let's talk Hajimite no Gal, episode 2. And so, episode 2 continues the, rom the romantic comedy romp that we've had so far, and at this point it's just playing up kind of pretty much the same style that episode 1 was. At this point though, I think there's a few little things that you could talk about and just kind of appreciate um, going into this series compared to other series, and they ultimately have to revolve around where the harem or not harem the etchy based gags come in and also the character of yame herself like this episode revolves around the karaoke scene and it, pretty much everything in the episode is set up for the climax that is the uh, karaoke scene and ultimately i do think it's a, it's well done i do think that this episode is a lot better than the first one just because the characters are all a little bit more I guess you could say manageable, tolerable. They are a lot nicer to watch. Like the band of three friends. I like watching them this time because they are all exaggerated. I like how they were just on his side at the beginning and then like the this it just flipped. It flipped immediately once they realized that their friend was winning out in the end. But yeah, uh, everything I think is a lot better than the first episode. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I did in the first episode, which is good. It's good. It's it's a lighthearted anime, so that's the point, right? You have to be there to enjoy it. Now, to talk very quickly um, about what this anime is doing differently compared to every other romantic comedy. Like, yeah, you know, first off, we have a relationship already established. Like, that's a pretty big novelty, and we are seeing a date in that relationship, you know, in this episode. But what I think is actually pretty interesting is that the majority of the perverted elements, the majority of the etchy elements, aren't coming from things that are actually happening in in the life of these characters. It isn't coming from the characters themselves. It's coming specifically from the main character's fantasies. That's pretty interesting because, in a way, uh, the character of Yame, she's not really, you know, she's not being exploited to that degree. She's being exploited in the guy's mind, but she's not being exploited outside of it she's not the one being brought into those situations she's not the one provoking those situations i think it goes a long way because when you see yame at the end of the episode she she let it, well not leads on but she is a much more modest girl than what the boys expect she is she's definitely a lot more modest than what our main character thinks she's uh, thinks she is and i think it's ultimately very cute that she got kind of flustered when he was going to kiss her and so you know, like that little moment I think is worthwhile. And again, looking at the main character, all the perverted moments are really coming from his imagination. And I think that's actually a pretty nice way of doing the etchy gag. I think that's a pretty nice way of um, bringing in that kind of flavor to the anime. I think it's pretty cool that they're doing it only based on his fantasies. And then maybe with very little... Um, What's the word for this one? Very little action from the actual real Yame. I think that's a pretty nice nuance to have for this particular show. It makes it a lot more respectable. Like, actually, like that. that's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Really, this one's a bit of a fresher romantic comedy. It's a bit of a fresher uh, etchy series that we're having this season. And I, I really appreciate it for that. Another aspect of the series that I'm really enjoying is anytime we have the monologue with the inner main characters and man i keep forgetting his name like why does this keep happening jeez okay i have it now junichi anyway i like seeing inner junichis i think they're really funny i think it's just hilarious to see it and this time we got to see cool junichi who just looks like he knows what he's doing and has for some reason red hair like well whatever that was pretty funny um <laughs> It's cool to see the, th the three being like quick studies and then the perverted Junichi right there also saying that like he's going to go for it. And it's just like that whole little sequence of those three or those four trying to figure out what to do. It's it's pretty funny. The gag was there in the last episode. This time I think it's it's much funnier. So all around, I really do think this episode of Hajimete no Gal was a lot better than the first episode. I think it's it's funnier. I think it's a lot more uh, watchable. I think it's genuinely a little bit more heartfelt than the last one because like this one's less about Yame uh, teasing Junichi, but more about them actually doing something that's kind of coupley and, and it's, it's worthwhile. It's kind of embarrassing. Why did I say embarrassing? Oh yeah, the only one embarrassing is uh, Junichi at school when she's fielding questions from all her friends. Like really, it's heartwarming. It's a heartwarming little show 
and it, it's cool to see little tricks that it's throwing in there to keep it fresh and keep it different from other types of shows in the series. I don't have much more to add for this at this point. We know that one of the characters saw them finishing up their karaoke date, and so who knows where that'll go. Maybe it'll be something, maybe it won't. Regardless, guys, thanks for watching. I see that you guys like this show from the guys who have been watching the, the videos, the reviews. So again, you guys in particular, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this episode, if you have any thoughts, if you really like this little anime. And uh, yeah, if you got this far in the video, you might want to consider subscribing. It means you're kind of okay with my content. And if you subscribe, you'll get more of it. So uh, yeah, anyway, enough of that shameless plug. Guys, thanks for watching and until next time, I hope you have a great day.